All right, we're gonna get started. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm Tom Ponton, uh, the Director of Advancement, Class of 78. And uh, <clears throat> I really appreciate everyone taking their time to join us this evening and, and remember truly a great man, uh, John Moylan. DeMatha would not exist were it not for John Moylan. Uh, so we thought we would give this opportunity uh, to share with the DeMatha community, to open it up. If uh, you have a story, you want to tell, we're more than happy to share. We've got the Moreland family is joining us on this call as well. And I know that they are deeply touched that uh, so, member, so many members of the DeMatha community have reached out to them in the past week to express uh, their sympathy and uh, reading on Facebook, all of the wonderful things that were said about John was uh, truly touching. It, it really was. And I know it meant a lot to the family it meant a lot to us here at DeMatha. So uh, I'm going to moderate this and like a teacher, I'll be calling on people to speak, but we, we have a couple of uh, uh, people lined up here to speak at the very beginning. And we're going to start with our president, uh, Father James, who will say a few words and then lead us in prayer. Father. I wanna thank all of you for joining us tonight in prayer and in memories about the life and ministry of John L. Moylan. This virtual gathering is just one step in honoring the more than 60 years of service that John had for us and for DeMatha. The family is having a private mass <clears throat> next month here at DeMatha. And once the pandemic restrictions are lifted, we will announce a public campus-wide celebration of life for John. As with anything important in our lives, we'll begin with prayer. In addition to remembering John Moylan in prayer, Today is also the first anniversary of the death of Morgan Wooten, both giants in our school history. So now let us quiet our minds and hearts for a moment and bow our heads in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Loving God, we thank you for sending us models and inspirations in our lives. Tonight, we remember Morgan Wooten, who passed into your kingdom one year ago today. Give him eternal rest. And tonight, in a special way, we also remember the life and dedication of John L. Moylan, a man who dedicated 60 years of his life in guiding a small Catholic high school on Madison Street into becoming the giant powerhouse of academic learning and gospel living. We are all grieving this loss, dear God, and we ask you to pour out your grace and comfort on his wife, Joan, their children, Kevin, Kathleen, Timothy, Patrick, and the grandchildren. Grief is different for everyone, but we are united in our need for you to comfort us now. Bless our memories of John. Bless the words we will speak tonight. And may our faith remind us that one day we will all meet again in the kingdom. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Can I have an amen? Amen. St. John de Matha, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tom asked me to begin with a brief memory, and I will, and I'll pass it back to Tom Ponton. My memory of John goes back to my first days at de Matha back in 1975. <clears throat> I had already worked as a teacher and a counselor in three other Catholic high schools, but I certainly knew that coming to DeMatha was the big league for me, and I was more than nervous. I knew about John, but did not have a lot of contact with him prior to my assignment. But from day one on the campus, John demonstrated to me what a true leader is all about. John listened. He encouraged, he certainly challenged, but he always did it in such a way that whenever I left his office or finished a conversation I had with him on campus or in his home, I felt informed, I felt better, and I felt valued. They are gifts that John Moylan shared with me and many, many others, probably those of you on this call. And I hope, in tribute to him, I'm able to do the same now. 
So God bless you, John, and your memories. Thank you, Father. Uh, we are going. We have a special guest with us now, and that is uh, Miss Kelly Brandman. Hang on one second. I'm getting a little bit of feedback, so I'm going to. What? Why is that feeding back there, John? Uh, I'm trying to find John. He's not muted. Hold on one second. We'll be right with you. Hold on. Just gotta mute yourself. Yeah, I should have been muted. Okay. All right. No problem. My apology. This is if somebody would have told us a year ago that we would be doing something <laughs> like this, I, it, it would have been a total foreign concept to me. Uh, but we uh, are, are blessed to have with us a special guest. She is the superintendent of schools for the Archdiocese of Washington. We're going to ask her to unmute herself, and she would like to say a few words. And that is Miss Kelly Branneman. Thank you all. Can you hear me? Yes. Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, as introduced, I'm Kelly Branneman. I'm the superintendent of schools for the Archdiocese of Washington. I've been in the Archdiocese 18 years, but this is my first year as superintendent. I'm so happy to be asked to speak. I, I come to you this evening on behalf of Cardinal Gregory, Archdiocesan leadership, and our many Catholic schools across the Archdiocese of Washington. And in representing each of them, it's an honor for me to just say a very few brief words in honor of Principal Emeritus, Mr. Moylan, and offer my sincere condolences and sympathy to the family, to the DeMatha faculty and staff, and most importantly to the many, many young men um, that were formed and led by Mr. Molin over those many years as principal of the school. I think that what I see and have learned about his leadership um, is that predominantly most of you on this call that have been touched by his leadership and his, um, his faith and his service to the Catholic Church and to Catholic education um, is that he was exactly what he believed in, in forming young men in the mission of DeMatha to live their lives in a way that betters other communities, especially in the service of others. And he certainly modeled that, I believe, and is uh, truly that a part of his legacy um, as a man of leadership to better his own community, whether it be the DeMatha school community. You'll hear stories of his impact in the Archdiocese of Washington, Catholic education system as a whole. And I think Catholic education across the country significantly impacted by Mr. Moylan. I think that even personally um, in the Archdiocese, we have many practices and traditions that are a part of our schools now in the Archdiocese of Washington that we have Mr. Moylan to thank. As a lay leader, lay leader myself in Catholic education, now for over 25 years, I know my own path and many others follow in the footsteps of what was his pioneer step in being a lay leader in the Archdiocese of Washington. I learned to speak and ask for many of my colleagues that have been here and um, former principals of schools in the Archdiocese of Washington that knew him well and the expression over and over again with regard to John um, was that they had such a deep respect for him and his leadership and a deep love for him and they knew him as a trusted leader and a confidant that always, always put students first in the formation of what was important in education. I don't know if he's on the call or not, but our own chancellor of the Archdiocese of Washington, many of you probably know Terry Farrell, um, a proud DeMatha stag. Um, and I asked Terry yesterday uh, about his own experience with John and um, Terry paused for a second and said, you know what I know and really respect about him is that DeMatha has always been a priority, priority to him, even well after his retirement. When Terry experienced own loss in his family, John was always made, John always made the priority to be present um, and represent DeMatha long after his retirement and support the community that you all are here today. He never lost that commitment. I uh, never left that responsibility to serve and be a part of the community uh, that he deeply loved. So again, I just wanna say thank you for the opportunity to briefly speak and offer my 
um, not only my sympathy, but also my gratitude for the life and leadership of, of Mr. Moylan. To his family and to the DeMatha community, you continue and remain in our prayers in the Archdiocese of Washington. And I leave you with, if there's anything that the ADW, the Archdiocese can do to further support the continuation of his legacy, um, Father, and um, please don't hesitate to reach out and we'd be happy to have further conversation. But thank you tonight for being a part of this and allowing me to speak. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Um, if you all had the chance to read the DeMatha Express today, you saw that uh, Dr. McMahon wrote a wonderful uh, eulogy. There is also a recorded version of it as well. Uh, if you haven't had the chance to read that, please take a few minutes to read it, and that is uh, wonderful. But we've asked Dan to come back on here now uh, tonight uh, as the principal of DeMatha and say a few words as well uh, about John Moore. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, everybody. Um, uh, I'm happy to see people. I'm uh, so sad that it's uh, on this occasion. So, uh, those of you who've um, looked at um, my remarks about John uh, will uh, see deeply um, I felt about him and how much I appreciate uh, everything he did for me. And so I'm just going to tell uh, one or two stories that I didn't put in the, uh, in my reflection. One of which is that I hope one thing I learned is uh, from John is. Uh, when you have uh, teachers like me to um, tolerate them, because how he managed to tolerate me as a teacher is uh, sometimes amazing to think of. Uh, I, I could be a difficult and um, a difficult uh, teacher, and, uh, but John was so supportive. Uh, and that reminds me to turn around and, and do the same. And, uh, John was also trusting in astonishing ways. He uh, trusted me as a first year teacher with Patrick and that seems amazing uh, to me. There are lots of great teachers at, uh, at DeMatha and uh, I was fortunate. Uh, I had uh, Pat and um, his classmates for homeroom and, uh, and first period. That's quite a, uh, quite a feat. Um, you know, so many people are gonna reflect about uh, John tonight that I do want to say a couple of words about Joan. Uh, she was heroic. Uh, I, I can't tell you how uh, welcoming and um, familial she was to, to everyone. Um, and John knew that. He said in almost every time you could get him to talk, he thanked Joan and uh, for her work. And uh, in one of the great stories, John had a basically a cinder block cell for an office at the at the very beginning, and um, he always told me he says, you know, Joan came in and sewed the curtains that went in the in there. I, I mean, um, from that beginning in 1956, uh, she was with us every step of the way, and um, she has opened her. Uh, home on innumerable occasions and her heart on every occasion to uh, to the DeMatha, DeMatha family. Um, I will say John was a different generation and this is my closing story. Uh, so he hired Mary Yerish the same year he hired me in 1981. And um, so uh, he told Mary in the interview that uh, he would arrange it so she didn't have a first period class. And she was a little bit confused and wanted to know why she wouldn't have to be there when everybody else did. And he said, well, you'll want to wash the breakfast dishes from your <laughs> Mary was like caught totally off guard. Like, what the heck are you talking about? And, but Joan did the breakfast dishes and uh, when, and Joan worked at DeMatha and she came in at nine and John was happy to extend the same uh, courtesy to Mary who, as it turned out, didn't need it. Uh, but um I, uh, I miss him ferociously and uh, I have learned uh, so much from him and I feel like I keep going on learning things from him. So thanks, Tom. Right. Thank you, Dan. I've got a lot of John Moreland stories. I'm just gonna tell one quick one and then we'll open it up. And that is uh, when John was honored by the Washington Post, and this is, this is meant to be humor here, okay? Uh, he was honored by the Washington Post. Uh, he, he got flown down to St. Thomas with uh, his wife, Joan and while he was there, he got bit by the brown recluse spider. 
and you know, and it was it was nasty. And he came back. He had a fever, and yet he conducted a orientation session uh, the first night back uh, with a low grade fever. And I went up to John and I said, John, you know, by its very name, the brown recluse spider only attacks unless it's been agitated. What were you doing when you got bit by the spider? And he said, I was giving a speech. Uh, as we know, <laughs> John Moylan, I teased him for years at athletic banquets about him having, uh, you know, uh, his, uh, he liked to give long speeches. We loved him, but uh, I used to tease him at every, I, I said that uh, Damatha, we produced a promotional video and featured John and we were gonna call it 60 minutes, but after he finished talking, we called it 48 hours. But he was at these banquets where I told these jokes religiously. They were always cleared by him. I have tremendous respect for John Moylan. And uh, he, he was the person that uh, really first got me to come back to the school. And so I just kid because I care. So what I want to do here is if you would like to speak, um, you can type in the, you know, in the notes section, right, of, the, uh, of your bar. Just say, Tom, I would like to, to speak. Now, if for some reason that is foreign to you, you don't know how to handle that, I'll give you my cell number and you could text me. And um, my cell number is 301-655-5650. 301-655-5650. So text me if you'd like to speak or put your name up there in the window and I will call on you. And I know that everyone's going to keep things um, dignified, uh, and uh, but uh, we, we do want to hear from you. As I said, hearing on Facebook last week, uh, you know, I heard, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, I saw a lot of wonderful uh, tributes to John, and, and that's what we're here uh, tonight to do. So uh, if I don't call your name, uh, feel free to text me maybe a couple times, because just as I'm speaking here, I'm getting a bunch of people who are ready to go. So uh, Dutch Morley said he is uh, ready to say a few words. My classmate from the class is 78. Go ahead, Dutch. Am I on, Tommy? You are. I am. Well, that's a major accomplishment in its own self there. Um, I would just like to say that uh, I probably had four people call me or contact me in the last five days to, uh, and, the, and the question is always, you know, who was most influential on me, Morgan Witten or Mr. Moylan? And, you know, when I think about that, it's, it's probably, I guess Morgan was, was more every day uh, a part of my athletic career anyway, but, but Mr. Moreland certainly was there every day of our school years, every day when we were in the hallways. Uh, I remember we used to, you know, whether we were in the hallways or in the athletic events or in the parking lots or whatever, Mr. Moreland would always approach us. He would always speak to us uh, in a kind way. If something needed to be said uh, to straighten us out, he would say that as well. Uh, we all knew the direction he was going. And I, I just think he was, he was great for the math, as everybody knows and says. And he certainly influenced me. Um, I appreciated his presence at the school. I thought he did a great job as a principal. Again, uh, just interacting with us as students in a positive way. And also, again, in a, in a kind of disciplinary way whenever it needed to be done. So I, I, I reached out to Pat Moylan earlier and uh, I just said that uh, John certainly was, was a major influence on me. I appreciated everything he did for me. He spoke to me all the time. Uh, even now, when my kids are at school, or I'd seen him at games recently, he, needless to say, reached out and talked and spoke, and he was always very kind to me and very, uh, very giving, and uh, I think he did a hell of a job of leading us in the right direction where we needed to go, so I appreciate everything he did for me. All right, Dutch, thank you. Um, I know a lot of the class years of people. But if I don't, please, uh, please say what it is. Uh, you're here. Uh, Robert Braswell, you said you'd like to speak. And what, yeah, what year you are doing? you? Good, 1995. Uh, okay. So um, I think you all can speak to uh, 
who Mr. Moreland was uh, as a man, a Dematha uh, leader, um, the impact he's all had. But I'll share one quick story. So I had graduated from uh, Dematha already. I was doing my first year at UConn with Mr. Hathaway. And um, my sister was having not a great experience at the local high school. She was a freshman. And I called up Mr. Moreland. I was like, Mr. Moreland, my sister's having a tough time. Do you think you can help me get her into Seton? And he was like, he made a couple jokes and I was like, ah, oh, blah, 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 about stuff back from a couple years before. And he called Seton. And the next day we got a call and my sister got into the school. She graduated from Seton. She went in to graduate from University of Maryland. She has a master's from University of Maryland. And um, Mr. Moreland was a part of that journey. So that's the reason why I had to make sure I call in and, and share that story because uh, the reaches go outside of the math of walls as well. Thank you very much, Robert. I appreciate it. So I've got about five or six people who've already uh, texted me and lined up. So we'll get to you. Um, the next person is from the class of 1959, uh, Jack Hughes. You got to unmute yourself, Jack. Let's see, Jack, I'm looking for you here. Oh, okay. You see how to unmute yourself? You got to get those glasses in there. I tell you what, I'll come back to you. All right, you try to, I, I, I'll try to work with you on how to unmute your, yourself there. Okay, Jack. And uh, uh, Dennis Golden, former faculty member would like to speak. It is wonderful to see all of you. Um, so many faces that uh, I know, so many folks that I know. Raz, it's great to see you. Um, so, Dan McMahon said at one point, we are born into the families we are born into, but we get to choose who we listen to and the voices who influence us in this world. And we all have a mother and we all have a father. And he said, we get to choose our second mothers and our second fathers. And I am ridiculously proud to say that John Moylan was my second father. And I've been away from DeMatha <laughs> since 1999. But when I do things right, it's in that charism. It's in that mode of thought. And when I get off track, I remind myself and I'm like, dang it, you know, you are still DeMatha and, and carry that with you. And it refocuses me. And uh, when I remind myself that he is my second father, then I get back on the right track. And it is wonderful to see all of you and <clears throat> God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you. Uh, Jack Hughes, I think you have figured out how uh, to speak. So class of 59, Jack Hughes. Wouldn't be able to do it without my wife, but thank God she was here. Uh, I started to say that I, I sent a, a message to the family and told them that in my 16 years of Catholic education, that John Moylan had the most profound effect on me and he was my favorite teacher. I was thrown out of another school before I came to DeMatha. And so it was an uphill fight. I was not a Rhodes Scholar and I was probably a class clown. So I got in a lot of trouble. The most uh, remember, memorable words that he told me was that if I didn't change my ways, that uh, my college experience would not be very good. He nailed it and uh, it, it took a while, but uh, I finally graduated. And I spent a lot, not a lot of time, but I spent many conversations with John through the years. I still admire him. He's a great, great man. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Um, our art teacher, uh, Vaughn Halsey, uh, would like to speak. And I got a few other people lined up and, uh, you know, I'm, I'll get to you. Go ahead, Vaughn. Okay. Um, you see me already? Right. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you to John Moreland and his family and to the DeMatha family, because back in 92, when I was interviewed by John, 
he asked me a couple things about my life and I put it all out there the bad, the good and the bad and his trust and faith and me being able to do what I do is why I'm still here. And I had an interview today with a family for next year, a kid by the art and the mother asked me, what is it about the matter that makes the matter the matter? And I started naming John Morgan with all the people who made the matter what it is today. And I told her, I said, uh, it's a trust. I mean, that interview lasted three hours. I couldn't believe he had me here for three hours. But then once I started working here, I realized why he kept me here so long. So I just want to thank him and thank his family for him and thank all the rest of you guys who graduated from DeMatha. And I appreciate all the support and things that I've been getting over the years from him. And so basically, I just wanted to put that out there and thank you all. Thank you, Vaughn. And uh, Vaughn also uh, owes his uh, uh, job at DeMatha, uh, getting it uh, to um, uh, Clark Mester, class of 65, uh, who was instructor at Bowie State. So uh, Vaughn had obviously John Moreland's uh, mentorship, but uh, Clark also, I know, played a key role in that. Um, George Thayer, who a DeMatha parent and um, our great tennis coach, uh, would like to say a few words. George? Thank you, Tom. I appreciate it. John Moreland meant a lot to me, a lot to everybody I know, but this is my story real quick. Uh, I got to work with him for seven years as the tennis coach, as Tom mentioned, and um, it's funny. I've got lots of funny stories. I'm only going to share one, uh, well, two, because Tom, I was going to find, try to find a way to, to mention the spider story, but you, you, you did it. <laughs> I heard it several times at the spring banquet during that seven year run. One of the, one of the good ones. Um, John hired me, uh, actually I volunteered for years as, as an assistant and then he hired me for, for the head tennis coaching job. And he said, we've never won the WCAC. I said, yes, sir, I'll, I'll do my best. He says, no, we're gonna, we're gonna win it. All right, we're gonna win it next year. He gave me a year to build. Well, then we won five straight and he was so supportive of the, uh, of the team. I, I, I appreciate his, his support. Um, and every year, last story, he always loved to tell me how he played defense against Abdul Jabbar <laughs> with the tennis racket. He loved to tell the story of the tennis racket. He told it every year at the beginning of each season to every team. So thank you. Those are my memories and I sure appreciate it. Thank you, George. Thank you. Good to see you. Uh, Tim Miller, class of 80 and the president of the DeMatha Senior Boosters uh, would like to speak. Tim. Hey, Tom. Hey, thanks a lot. And uh, real quick, uh, I put in the chat. Pat, you know, you talked about Moylan when he won that uh, award from the Washington Post. Well, my brother, Mark, who's a class of 81, his wife, Veronica, happened to work for the Washington Post, and she was the chaperone, and she remembers that story very vividly. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so um, anyway, so I've been fortunate to be in a position to really support the math, uh, specifically last, say, 25 years where I've collected tickets and for, you know, the home football, basketball games, working the smoker. And um, I know Dr. Min had mentioned in his missive uh, that came out through the uh, Thematic Express, I think in, he mentioned like some, I believe in like 16 years, uh, John has not, you know, he, I guess Dan could probably count on one hand some events that he was, wasn't at. And he probably had a pretty good reason why he wasn't able to go. But I can probably say the same thing, you know, up until his, where his health wasn't um, very good. Um, that, that guy was there almost every time. I mean, no matter what the event was. Um, and that's just my little, very small part of it. And I'm sure there's a whole other, you know, the music program and everything else that goes on that he probably, you know, doubled up on or whatever. But uh, but this is an amazing guy. I mean, totally dedicated. And, um, and a lot of what <clears throat> my inspiration for his um, volunteerism and, you know, just being an overall good guy, very good role model. Now, and I attribute it a lot to him. That's all. Well, thank you, Tim. And of course, Tim, um, you know, as uh, taken over for his dad, the legendary Chuck Miller used to work the gates with uh, Mr. Campbell and Mr. Young. And, uh, you know, they were a fixture uh, at the, the math of basketball games there during the day and football games as well. Um, so again, feel free to uh, either message me 
that you would like to speak, or you can text me again at 301-655-5650. And I've got two people lined up to speak, but I know others want to speak. So let me know if you want to get on the list and we will call on you. Uh, Bill Fahey from the class of 65 would like to speak uh, from Utah. Bill, can you hear me, Bill? I can, Tom. Can you hear me good? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, perhaps a prominent coach has given DeMatha the name recognition that it has today, and perhaps a teacher who was in the classroom for 50 years had more face time with students and alumni than John. But when I think of John, I think of the fact that DeMatha might not even be here today. It's not just his leadership in the classroom. It's not just his leadership in administration, <clears throat> but it's his leadership as, as running a business successfully as he did at DeMatha. In addition to that, John's the procuring cause behind prominent coaches coming to DeMatha. He's the procuring cause behind the music program that we have today. I don't think the math would exist without John. And as far as him as a person, I don't feel like I'm going to pray for John. I'm going to pray to John because I know where he is today. All right, Bill. Thank you very much. Um, Tim Skirpon, I believe from the class of 99. I think I got that right, Tim. Um, Good time. That's uh, right. Mr. Ponta, I guess is probably the last. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> um, that's a hard, uh, hard one to follow. Um, I, I wanted to share. Uh, Mr. Moylan was a, a, you know, a very big figure in my memories of Dematha, um, but I, I didn't realize until year, years later how important I and every student really was to him. And so my story is kind of a little bit about that. Um, when I was applying for colleges, he um, approached me and asked if I would like to have him as one of my uh, letters of recommendation. And I've never been exceptional at strategy, but especially then I didn't understand how significant it was that the principal of the school was writing for me and, and you know, that it was, <laughs> it was his idea. Um, years later, uh, I got my hands on this letter um, and he, he wrote like two you know, single space pages of heartwarming feedback and talked about things I didn't even realize he knew, like how I had uh, struggled when my father had cancer when I was in eighth grade before I was even a student at Tabatha. So um, I'm a little shaken up. I've, I've been meaning for years to reach out to him and, and let him know, you know, how much I appreciated that. So it's, uh, it's sad that I can't do that. Uh, but I'm really happy to share, share with everybody here now. He, he was definitely a really great one. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, Tim. I, I have a, a quick story, then I'll, I'll call on our next person. And that is um, early on in my career, John Wallen called me one night at my house about 8.30 at night. And uh, he said, Tom, uh, what's the phone number of the high school sports editor of the Washington Post? And I, I gave it to him and I said, well, what are you going to do? And he goes, well, this one kid, she he should be all met. And I said, John, the pitcher is going to be taken tomorrow. He goes, I don't care. He goes, give me the phone number. So I gave him the phone number. And sure enough, the next day, that kid was in the pitcher and was a first team all met. John Mullen did a lot of things like that behind the scenes that no one will ever know uh, on behalf of the students of this school. Um, I have uh, Francis Smith would like to say a few words. So you have to excuse me, Mr. Smith, that your title did not come all the way through. So you'll have to say exactly who you are. And my apology for that. Uh, that's quite all right. Uh, my name is Francis Smith. I'm from the class of 1966. And um, um, as an African-American student, I can tell you that uh, John Moreland was one of the finest men it has ever been my privilege to encounter. Um, I started out, I don't test well. I started out in B and we had A, B and C in those days. I don't know how you do it now. I started out in B, uh, but my grades after the first year, uh, John created a separate schedule for me. Um, and then the next year um, he created another special schedule for me and then he changed my section. He, um, he, applied, he, he made me apply for every African-American based scholarship I could. 
Uh, thanks to him, I went to Johns Hopkins and had a wonderful academic career. And um, about 15 years ago at a reunion, I, st I met another African-American student from the 1980s who said to me, did you ever encounter any, any discrimination when you were at DeMatha? And I said, no. And he said, I didn't either. And we both went to Mr. Moreland and we asked him. And Mr. Moreland said he never saw race. And he is one human being who I can safely say I absolutely believe in. He was a wonderful man. And he had a major imp uh, in, uh, impact on my life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Ken Mellett, uh, uh, John Moreland, and I'm sure Ken will get into this. I mean, a huge uh, proponent of the music program at the Matha, founder music program with John Mitchell. Uh, Ken Mellett is a member of our board and a tremendous supporter of the school. Uh, Ken? All right, thanks, Tom. And uh, it's great, great that we're all getting a chance to uh, share some stories about John. And, you know, John was, everything that everyone has said is great leader. He was a great man. Uh, I love the way he always would go into a group of students and break up the group you know, or just see exactly what they were talking about. And, uh, and uh, but, you know, he really used humor uh, to make a lot of points. And that's what uh, he, uh, I had the pleasure along with uh, my wife, Mary Ellen, we used to travel with the band to all the different band trips. And we spent a terrific amount of time with John and Joe. And, uh, and Dan, I echo your comments about Joan. What, a, what an angel, really, in terms of what she, was, uh, what she did and the contributions that she made. But good golly. But, uh, you know, a couple of funny stories is, you know, he had he, he had that sardonic wit, you know, right? I mean, he was a terrific amount of sarcasm. So, uh, you know, I, we, I was uh, doing the, I was the MC on the uh, band doc. And, uh, you know, we had an auction and we had a horse race and it was a fundraiser. It was a really long, a huge amount of time invested with not as much money coming out of it, but nonetheless. So I had the pleasure of introducing him that night. And, uh, and my little uh, byline for him was, uh, I'd like everyone to uh, say hello and meet the Don Rickles of DeMatha. Now that, uh, that might be a little dated for people <laughs> Who, uh, who don't know who Don Rickles was, but a very sarcastic comedian. Another story, the kids used to come home with uh, John Moylan stories all the time. But one of the funniest ones was when Coley came, came in, he said, yeah, well, Mr. Moylan came in the home room today. We were all playing. And I said, well, that's great. It was great. Yeah, but he came in with his fingers in his ears like this. <laughs> you guys sound terrible, you know? But anyway, so just a great guy. Uh, just just so, so down home, old school in terms of his, his approach. And uh, but just uh, we love him dearly and always uh, we're uplifted to see him uh, after the boys uh, left to math and the time that we could spend together. Very funny person. Thank you, Ken. Um, when we honored John for 25 years as principal in 1993 at a banquet and I thought it would be funny to show the box score of a game that we played in a torrential rainstorm with a backup kicker. So John was the kicking coach of the team. And in this box score, every extra point attempt failed. And it said in the box score, kick failed, kick failed, kick failed. I said, let's get a look at the kicking coach, famous kicking coach of the matter. So then John got up on the stage and he spent five minutes explaining each kick and why it missed. <laughs> so proud of himself. Uh, Jason Ballou, class of uh, 89, would like to speak. Jason. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate it. Good evening, everyone. Um, just a couple quick words. I knew Mr. Moylan not only as a student uh, from 85 to 89 and as a teacher, 95 to 98, but he, I lived in the same neighborhood as Mr. Moylan in uh, College Park Woods. So he lived down the street and to the right. So when we decided to do things we weren't supposed to do, we always walked up the hill and away from Mr. Moylan's house. So uh, all, the, uh, all the shenanigans were definitely um, out of his view and that was on purpose. Um, a couple quick stories. Um, one, I remember during a, a teacher conference, there was a particular student whose name I won't mention 
who whose grades, let's just say, uh, left a lot to be desired. But this student was one of the nicest kids in the school and one of the most uh, spirit oriented as far as Damatha um, going. And um, I stood up in support of this young man to try to save him because his grades really meant he should have been kicked out. And I could tell when I even started to speak that I didn't ha have to say a word because Mr. Moylan was on the same page with several of us that um, in the long run, this kid was um, a benefit to the school. And, um, you know, ultimately, it, it, John Moylan would also say frequently, see students run the world. So, you know, it takes some guts for <laughs> a principal to say stuff like that as well. That student, by the way, ended up uh, turning out wonderfully and has flourished in um, his chosen profession, which is not a, a, a traditional, um, you know, nine to five job. Um, but I always remember Mr. Moylan getting the big picture. The final thing, and people have alluded to this, is I got a kick of how uh, much joy Mr. Moylan got when we prevailed in what he would call the country club sports. He loved winning football and basketball and baseball and so forth. But if we could beat uh, Gonzaga and Georgetown Prep and golf and tennis and some of the other sports, I think he got some particular joy out of that. Um, and people have always mentioned um, his support of the music program, which um, in my mind was, was huge in my life in particular. Uh, the final thing I'll say is, you know, as far as I'm concerned, if they built a statue next to St. John de Math himself, uh, it would be wholly appropriate. So uh, uh, God bless the Moylan family and thank you, Mr. Moylan. Thank you, uh, Jason. Uh, we have on with us here, uh, uh, Don Clark uh, is retired military and uh, three sons attend DeMatha, two grandsons who attended DeMatha, um, president of the uh, men's club at one time and a uh, great DeMatha supporter down through the years. Thank you for your service. Uh, I, I don't actually have your military titles in front of me, Mr. Clark, so you have to pardon me on that, but uh, glad you could join us from Florida and you have the floor. Okay, uh, I guess uh, John and I went kind of way back all the way to uh, 1970. I had one boy graduate in uh, 73, another one graduated in 74. Uh, I had uh, a couple of grandsons also graduated from DeMatha. Uh, the one thing that I said about John was uh, how gracious he was and how fair he was. Uh, I had a son that played quarterback uh, and we were playing uh, Georgetown Prep and we had run up the score to like 35 to nothing. And the parents were just in the stands jumping up and down like children. And John was in the stands and John went down and told the coach to stop running up the score and we we stopped at about 35 to nothing but he would not let our team uh really make georgetown prep look bad and i thought that was great uh that the principal taught us just like he taught the kids uh to be fair all right thank you thank you very much um I know he asked me, he doesn't want to speak, and I'm not going to ask him to speak. I just want to acknowledge that he's on the call, and that is uh, Joe Bierman, uh, legendary teacher and coach back at DeMatha in the uh, late, in the 1960s and 70s. Want to just wave to everyone there, Joe. Great to see you. Great to see you, Joe. Um, Neil Murphy, speaking of legends, legendary teacher and coach at DeMatha, uh, wants to say a few words. Neil? Thanks, Tom. It's great to see everybody, and all the people who John has impacted over the years. Um, you know, quite simply, I'm here with my wife, Maureen, and uh, John and DeMatha changed our lives. We escaped New York in 1985. He came down here and fell in love with the place. But two quick stories. These are normally three beer stories. I'm going to try and cut it down. But um, at the beginning, I came in 85, but summer of 84, we're on vacation in Seaside Park, New Jersey.
Jersey. Now, I remember back then, no cell phones, no phones in the house, no internet, whatever. Pete Strickland, who you probably all know, he finds out the real estate plate place we rented from. John has an opening on the faculty. So I get a note on my door from the real estate person called John Moylan of Damascus High School. So I take a roll of quarters. I go down to the phone booth, put them in there, and I'm talking with John. And we've all had conversations with John. It goes on and on. We talk about everything except teaching. All right. And I'm watching my pile of quarters go down as we talk. At the end, he goes, well, are you interested in the job? I said, well, what would I be teaching? He goes, AP physics. I said, John, I'm a math here. <laughs> physics? He goes, what's the problem? Math, science, it's all the same. You go to the board, put a couple problems up there, and we'll make sure you have an answer kit. Second part of that is the following year. He has a math opening. So we do the interview. It goes well. He says, yeah, I'd like to offer you the job. I said, well, I got to go back and talk to the boss. We're still living in New York, Maureen. And we just had our firstborn, Brian. So she's going to have some questions about benefits and things like that before we move down. He goes, okay, call me Tuesday night at seven o'clock. You know, we'll have the ladies talk. Maureen was going to talk to Joan and they can talk about benefits and the things John and I didn't understand. And then we can talk and, you know, we'll firm this thing up. So I make the call. Joan answers. Maureen and Joan, they talk for a while. And Joan answers all of Maureen's questions. Then I get on and talk to John. He's not there. Where is he? <laughs> Finally, John shows up. Where was he? He was at a summer league game. I was like, John, summer league game? Do you always go to summer league games? I do if we're playing Gonzaga. And that was my introduction to DeMatha. And like I gotta say, it's been great ever since. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, Neil. Um, and remember, now we're, we're going to go on here for a little bit longer. So if you'd like to uh, uh, say a few words, my cell number, again, you can text me, is 301-655-5650. Um, and you can also message me here on the top. I'm actually going to call on a couple of people, too, like class. Uh, of course, I was never a teacher. But uh, I know Jim Roper. I, I know I saw him. So, Jim? I'm gonna call on you to say a few words uh, about uh, John and the music program. Well, obviously, uh, John Mitchell sends his regards. He had an appointment and um, he's, he just texted me, said he's on his way, so he hopes he can get here um, in time. Um, uh, John was you know, phenomenal in, in his support of the music program as the administration is. Um, and, um, you know, my job, wouldn't even exist if he had not started the music program. So always thankful for that. One real quick story that I, um, I always think about John is when we were on one of our music trips, <clears throat> when the kids have curfew, 11 o'clock, we always tell them, you know, no food, you know, can't order food after, after curfew. I see Dennis Golden over there and he, he and, uh, John McGordy hit the jackpot one time. Um, but, uh, so, it's probably around 1130 and John Mitchell and John Moylan are going down the hallways, checking on rooms, make sure everybody's in there. And here comes the, uh, the food cart, you know, and for room service. And this guy is, comes off the elevator. He's driving the cart down to a room and John and John Mitchell and John Moylan think they, they've hit the jackpot. So they hold back a little bit. The guy knocks on the door. Door opens, the guy pushes the card in, and John and John come following in right behind the guy with the food to a couple who were just there at the hotel. It was none of our students. So uh, they kind of just looked and kind of backed out and, and uh, went on their way. But that's, you know, that's one of my favorite John Boylan stories is he thought he was, was going to get a lot of food that night. So... But uh, just uh, just incredibly supportive, and and we miss him already. Thank you, Jim. Uh, the math of parent and the uh, the announcer of the basketball games, uh, Dennis Duffy, would like to say a few words. Dennis, thank you, Tom. Hello, everyone. Nice to see everyone. Uh, just two things. Uh, I am not a Dematha grad. Uh, I have to admit that here, but I have two boys that went there and. Uh, and my dealings with John Moylan was always very quick and casual, just passing in the night, so to speak. But what I want to address is two things, and they're macro things that 
uh, I've said this in other forums and other circumstances. In my opinion, high school is the most important four years of any person's life. Uh, the point there is if you get off track in high school, it's very, very difficult to get back on track. If you're in college, you drop out of college, you have a job thing that you're working on as a younger person, even if you don't go to college, um, you can still get back on track. But if you're off track in high school, it's very difficult to recover. And just by looking at all the faces on the screen, all the DeMatha grads, uh, my own boys, uh, just the DeMatha legend is a testament to John Moylan. It starts there at the top and it's flowed downhill for thousands and thousands of people that have uh, come into contact with him. So I think that's amazing. The other thing I would say is the charisms of DeMatha that I see as an outsider are education, focus, and humor. Every person that I have dealt with, with that I come across at DeMatha always has a smile on their face. And again, that starts at the top. Thanks. Thank you, Dennis. Um, Bill McGregor, I believe, is on this call now. And uh, if Dennis Golden is still here, he'll laugh because Bill and I always used to tell the same jokes at these banquets about each other and John Moreland. But Bill is going to talk about John Moreland. Bill? Yeah, th <clears throat> thank you, Tommy. Um, I apologize for getting on a little bit late. We had uh, we, we were doing workouts here. and we're, we're, I'm still over here at the facility, so thank you. Um, you know, I, I can remember the, uh, the first time that I came over to DeMatha and had an interview with John. This is way back in 1972. Um, I, we, we met in the, uh, it was now the attendance office and John, John's office was in the, in the back there and he had the dark wood paneling and on, on his uh, desk, he had a, a small green lamp and, uh, and we were talking about the possibility of working at DeMatha. And, uh, and I was as nervous as can be. I, I'm sure I was sweating like, like you couldn't believe. And just, uh, just being there was kind of, kind of uh, eerie and scary. Then, uh, then talking to the principal of the school was, was over the top too. It was totally different. Then John, John uh, is trying to break the ice and you know, asking me what I could teach or you know, what I wanted to do. And then uh, he said, uh, I, think I, have a, I think I have a position for you. And he said, uh, I think you can teach uh, you know, uh, sophomore English, but I'll hook you up with Buck to make sure that's okay. I'm looking for a head JV football coach, a head JV baseball coach, uh, someone to run the weight room and somebody to assist with the bus, <laughs> driving the bus. And uh, you know, back then being fresh out of college, I said, well, that's a great, great deal. I, I can't wait to start. <laughs> so I really appreciate the offer and I'll take it on the spot. Uh, but uh, it was absolutely fantastic being with John. Uh, over the course of time, I still remember uh, after every football game, I would have to go into his office and we would uh, do a critique of the game. And John always said the same thing to me after every ball game. Bill, number one, you never throw enough to the tight end. And number two, uh, Bill, you never run a fake punt. <laughs> and, uh, and he's right. But again, uh, you know, I, I, I love him. And uh, I really appreciate all the years I've had at DeMatha. And uh, I, I could not have, I could not thank John, his family and enough for, for allowing me uh, the opportunity to be a small part of the, of the uh, DeMatha community. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. There's a running joke at DeMatha, throw the ball to the tight end. So Bill, whenever our first game is after this concludes, I think your first play in honor of John Moylan, has gotta be the throw to the tight end. He's, it's just such an easy pass. It's just right over the line of scrimmage, you know, and it's, it's gonna pick up five yards for you every time at least. Why don't you I know, and, and John, John always says nobody ever covers the tight end. They they forget about the tight end. So uh, it, uh, it's classic. I, I, you love them. You'll absolutely love them. Uh, Mike Myrna, class of '89, I believe. Do I have that right, Mike? That's right. Hey, Tom. Hey, guys. How you doing? Um, let's just get right to it. I was a bit of a wise guy in high school. Tried to <laughs> try to make people laugh. Had a good time, and uh, I was always amazed at what I couldn't get away with at DeMatha. And a lot of it was because of Mr. Moreland because he knew everything about everybody. I mean, if you're in a hallway, he would catch you in a hallway and go, Mr. Myrna, Mr. Ballou, why aren't you in Smitty's class? You're supposed to be in English, blah, blah, blah. He knew your, everybody's schedule. How's that possible? Um, the funniest thing though, that really highlighted that one time, uh, I didn't play football, I was a wrestler, but I remember going to the football games and 
you know, they, you, I'd bring a bass drum because I played in a band and I'd bang this thing really loud and try to disrupt things. And anyways, we had a big group there and, and somebody was taking photographs for the yearbook. And that Monday I called into uh, Mr. Malone's office, which wasn't unusual, but he called me in. He's like, sit down. I want to show you something. He showed me a picture of that. It was a really nice picture, but in the middle of the picture was one of my friends who was making an unchristian gesture with his hand, let's just say. And he goes, that's JJ Demo, right? He goes to Gonzaga. I'm like, how'd you know that? He goes, don't worry about it. He goes, tell your buddy JJ, because of his hand gesture, this great photo is not going to make it in the yearbook. So not only did he know everything about us, he knew about kids that went to other schools. It was amazing. And then the last thing I'll add is, you know, we, he definitely obviously was a great principal. He kept and retained an amazing staff of teachers that were there forever, right? That's so important to the culture. And he supported, built up and supported all these, all these great sports that we have. I would argue that one of the reasons why we had such a great wrestling program was not because he supported it a lot, but because he didn't. Because Mr. Messier would every day say, why are we having to wrestle down in the classrooms? We're down here in the basement. We're not in the gym. He always used that to fire us up and get us mad about something. So in a way, his not a lot of support on wrestling actually helped to create one heck of a program. Thanks a lot to you guys. Uh, what a great guy. We're all blessed to have had him in our life. Oh, I'm sorry, one thing. So because, like a lot of kids, I didn't really appreciate Mr. Moreland when I was there. Years later, I did write him a letter. And I said, I just wrote in all the great things and how much he meant to my education. And his response was, ah, don't worry about it. You'd be surprised how many letters I get like that. Because, you know, when you're 16, 17 years old, you just really can't appreciate what you have in front of you. That's it. God bless, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, uh, Dr. Blaze Chromiak uh, from Mobile, Alabama, I believe, would like to say a few words. Uh, you, you there, Blaze? Yes, I'm there, Tom. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, I wanted to say uh, how much I appreciated my years at DeMatha. And Mr. Moylan, uh, he's pretty amazing because uh, he's such a uh, cheerleader for the school. But I'll tell you, he sold my mother. And for the parents of Damathus, he sold them. He had uh, exuded confidence in his staff, his team, the whole family of Damatha. And uh, I think that really stood out to me my whole life and, and uh, that kind of feeling. Um, I think that was a special thing. Um, and he did, whoever commented on his wry wit, he could correct you, sort of dress you down, and you almost were laughing at the end. I mean, he, he, came, he came across like he, it was gentle. He, he did it in a gentle way. And um, so that was special. And uh, just a lot of good thoughts and memories about my time. Started out as manager of the JV football team, helped the varsity on uh, game days because we had, I think, Thursday or Friday games, and they had Saturday, and then the last two years in the band, and uh, just all the great experiences I had. I miss Lito's Pizza big time. There's, there's nothing like it in Alabama, but uh, so miss y'all down from way down here. I want to see somebody else win the national championship, whether they throw the tight end or not, and uh, <laughs> Go Terps. And thank you, Blaze. Uh, all right, guys. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Blaze. Uh, I, I believe the class of 74 has something like uh, five or six doctors in that class. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, and we had a several <coughs> dentists, and Mr. Clark's son was, I believe, yep. is, is he a dentist? And Yes. Uh, Mike Dubik, and uh, so we, we yep, had Yep, Paul uh, Penn, Marcus Stoddard. There's yeah, the whole we, slew of them. Yeah, well, the year ahead of us was a lot of engineers, so we, we, we came back and said, let's try the medical side, so, but, uh, you know, where will we be without the math? I mean, it, it really was a force in shaping all of our lives, so thanks Thank for you. all you do, and the faculty who aren't there, the faculty who are there, um, you know, is amazing, amazing experience. Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, Tim Kelly, uh, class of 1990, and also was a former faculty member who is still in education. Uh, Tim? Hey, Tom. Thank you. And hello to everyone. Good to see so many uh, familiar faces. Um, I want to go back to my, my eighth grade self. Uh, so all my older brothers went to Eleanor Roosevelt High School. And for some reason, I just didn't test in there. So I said, oh, let me check out this place uh, called DeMatha. I had a lot of friends that were there. And uh, I, I can remember that being a very, very difficult time, right? I thought, for sure, I was going to go to this place, Eleanor Roosevelt, right? But John uh, invited me into his office, um, took the time to, to meet with me personally, which I thought was, was incredible, uh, and, and invested in me. And uh, that decision, you know, partly because Mr. Moreland took the time to talk with me, uh, really changed the trajectory of my life, right? Um, I fell in love with education um, at the Matha, became a, a teacher myself. And uh, when I was on faculty there, yes, I got tired of John asking me to get my darn bus license, but, uh, um, but the freedom that he gave us in the classroom uh, was incredible. And the trust that he had uh, in his teachers to do the right thing and, uh, and to be professionals uh, was one, one of the reasons why I love being on faculty there. But again, uh, going back to my eighth grade self, I, I just, I can remember that meeting with Don Moyle and him telling me, we want you here, right? That, that was important in my life. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Um, just a couple more and then we'll, uh, we'll conclude. But uh, Charlie Kenny, the class of 68, the president of the Alumni Association and a board member. Charlie, can you hear me? Earth to Charlie. I guess he can. I guess he cannot hear me there. Um, does anyone else, would, uh, before we wrap up, would anyone else like to say anything? Yes, please. What's that? Uh, Charlie, yes, I would like to say something. Okay. Who is that? Uh, my name is Chance Brown, and I'm part of the class of 2024. Although I did not know Mr. Moreland personally, I am a recipient of the Muses Scholarship in his honor. I wanted to let you all know as a beneficiary, his legacy carries on today and I wanted to thank him. May God bless the Moreland family. Well, that's great. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. It, it really is great to hear that. Um, uh, Jeff Hathaway, the class of 77 and a member of the DeMatha board as well, Jeff. Thank you very much, Tom, and good. it's nice to see everybody. Uh, first off, I want to thank Mrs. Moreland for sharing her husband for over 60 years with all the students, parents, and staff. So Mrs. Moreland, thank you very much for all that you mean to DeMatha. You know, I, I think a sign of respect is after 45 years, after your graduation, I still called Mr. Moylan, Mr. Moylan, because that's who he was for all those 45 years from my first day on campus to the last day that I saw him uh, at a basketball game. He inspired me on one particular occasion. After class, I got a note, 10th grade, first quarter. You know, we all have had some bumpy quarters so uh, I go down to the office and says, come on in, have a seat. And he said, uh, you like being the basketball manager, don't you? And I said, yes, sir. I, I really enjoy that. And uh, he said, well, I got a good idea for, for you. If you want to keep doing it, open the books. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, needless to say, uh, I opened the books. And uh, because of how he dealt with me, and his deep uh, concern for education, along with many other teachers at DeMatha, you know, I ended up spending 40 years in higher education. And, and so much of that goes back to Mr. Moylan and a, no, uh, a number of other teachers that uh, inspired the, uh, the, the profession of education in me. The one funny story, you know, we all lived through Mr. Moylan's assemblies, and um, since they weren't all short, towards the end, at one assembly, we were 
talking in the corner and Mr. Moylan kind of singled us out and uh, it was right before the prom and Mr. Moylan's telling everybody now, you know, every year we have somebody getting a car wreck, going to the prom every year. And of course, our group is back in the corner and we're laughing about, hey, that's crazy. We're not going to get in a car wreck. Sure enough, going to the prom, Key Bridge Marriott, getting on off the exit ramp and boom, somebody hits me right in the backside and uh, we pull over and it was two of the other people that were laughing during the assembly, uh, the Hartnett twins for the people that know them. And uh, as soon as the car hit me and I saw who it was, it was two of the Atha people. The first thing I thought was, oh boy, Monday is going to be a bad day. <laughs> and uh, he, he, he brought us in for a visit and kind of told us that we you know, should listen a, little, listen a little bit more. But I can't say enough about him. He's a pillar of DeMatha, uh, Mrs. Moylan and Mr. Moylan means so much to this school. And uh, I'm, I'm indebted to Mr. Moylan, like everybody on this screen is. So God bless DeMatha and God bless Mr. Moylan. Thank you, Jeff. Um, John Moylan and I went to a lot of wakes and funerals uh, after he stepped down as principal. And we went to one uh, wake um, over in Bowie and uh, Ed Cooksey, 72 is there, his father had passed away. We come walking in the door and Ed Cooksey looks at John Moore and goes, I didn't do it. You know, I'm innocent. I, it, it's just a natural response on some students. And they saw John Moreland that they had to say, I it wasn't me. Uh, but uh, uh, Dennis Golden uh, would like to say a few words. After Dennis uh, talks, I'm gonna say just a couple of uh, other words and then we're going to have Kevin Moreland come on and we'll conclude. Um, actually, hold on, before we get to, uh, Dennis, we're going to go. Dan McMahon is asked to say another word, and then we'll have Dennis, and then we'll 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 get to our conclusion. So, Dan, go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, real quick, uh, Dematha had a, a fabulous maintenance guy named Clarence Wesley, and John had an exceptionally expansive sense of what a teacher was, and he knew that sometimes the person teaching a kid was actually uh, Marilyn Carruthers or. Betty Dice or somebody sitting at a desk somewhere. And he knew that Clarence Wesley was a great teacher of kids. And lots of times for detention, he'd assign a kid to go to follow Wes around for an hour or so after school for four or five days. That would be the kid's punishment. The kid would think at first that he was being punished. And we'd find out that Clarence Wesley turned kids' lives around because John Moylan knew that any time you interact with a kid, that's a teachable moment. And when Wes was tragically killed in a car accident, um, John gave the eulogy um, in an all African American parish and uh, um, at an AME church. And uh, it was as moving and humbling a uh, thing um, as I've ever seen, just to. Uh, just a fabulous guy. Thank you, Dan. Uh, I missed this one here. Uh, Brenda McGregor would like to say a few words. Brenda? Oh, thank you, Tommy, very much. Um, I'm glad to see Bill got on the call. I know that was driving him crazy. Um, so Bill and I were sitting Friday night after John's death talking about all the memories. And I'm fortunate enough because I was a mom when John was the principal. My son, Bill, who uh, graduated with Tim Skirpon, who talked earlier, Bill Sutton, he graduated in 99. And John was completely pivotal in number one, creating the type of environment for teachers like Tim Kelly, um, Dennis Golden. Dennis Golden had a huge impact on my son, Bill. Um, so many of the teachers that had such an impact on their students because of the foundation that John set um, John single-handedly helped my son get into Catholic University where he got his engineering degree. Um, and then I knew John as the wife of the head football coach. And we would drive with John to and from the football games every week. Um, it was one of the best memories of my life. I remember going to their house for dinner and Joan made one of the most wonderful meals I've ever had. They were so welcoming to us. Um, his children were welcoming. Bill sat on the couch last week and talked about just what I saw 
his son Patrick shared that the kids, he knew where every kid needed to be because he hand wrote their schedules. Um, and so he was very impactful on me as a mom, as a, you know, he would joke with me like he did with Mrs. Yerish that when I, he would see me at practice, he would say, aren't you gonna go home now and make dinner for your husband? Um, he was just a great guy. And as Bill and I said last Friday night, like think about the thousands of people that are sitting on their couch at home, remembering John Moylan like we are. And it just, it's an amazing life he had and the impact he had. And I'm grateful to have known him and Joan and the rest of the math family. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. One of the things John used to say to me when I first started working was, you know, Tom, my, my, phone, num my phone number is in the phone book and it will always be in the phone book. And if somebody's going to call me, they can look me up and call me. Um, Dennis Golden is asked to say a few more words. Thanks. And Pat Moylan had put in, you know, in the, in the comments section, because you wrote out the schedules by hand of, of every kid and Brenda alluded to that and you know, Dan knows this and Marco knows this. And, and I had the privilege of having a little glimpse at this for, for, for a window of time. And uh, I was helping out with admissions. And uh, I was down, I, was, I went to a school and it, not a name school or anything like that. Because uh, there were at one point, we used to visit 70 Catholic grammar schools in the, in the diocese. And really make the rounds and get as many students as we could. And he knew the teachers there. He knew the seventh and eighth grade math and English teachers. He knew them by name. He had correspondences with them. And there was one young man who was in a pretty decent student, not a great student, and a pretty decent clarinet player, but he wasn't going to walk in and, you know, be in our wind ensemble or anything like that. He was okay. And we're trying to, and his dad was the eighth grade math teacher at this school. And his dad had encouraged kids to come to DeMatha for years before that. So this student's application was pretty good, but nothing outstanding. And the family made a very modest salary. And then John said, all right, we can give him a little bit of money for music. We can give him a little bit of money for academics, but how do we make this work for this family? And he pointed out to me, he took time to point out to me the students that his dad had encouraged to come to DeMatha in the years before that. And he said, I think we, maybe we can, re we can reward that and help this family and show loyalty to this family. And all of a sudden the, the, um, the tuition went from being this much to being manageable for the family. And he looked at me and he said, and that's how you do it. And it was just, it was awesome. It was just awesome. And uh, <clears throat> final story, some people have made mention of Gonzaga. And we used to have the coaches golf outing at the end. And I, you know, I'm not a golfer or anything, but I'm, I'm around and, and Vince, Vince Galco was gonna cook the steaks at the end of the night. And we're having everybody back to the, to the antler room for the, for the conference, uh, for the conference dinner and everyone's, milling around and that year had been a particularly good one. We competed in 13 sports. We won 11 championships and Gonzaga came in second place in nine of them. So John, John couldn't contain himself. And he said, Hey, it's great. We can all get together as a conference and, you know, be together. We share the mission of educating students. And, you know, I'll, I'll just call you up by school. And then you go up and, you know, Vince does a wonderful job cooking for everybody. And, you know, he's just so in it, right. And it's, it's great. And he says, so why don't we start with Gonzaga's table? We'll let them go first since they came in second and everything all year. <laughs> and, uh, just a wonderful John Moylan moment. Thank you. All right, Dennis. Uh, the reason why Charlie Kenny couldn't speak when I called on him, he's actually a moderator of the mock trial team and they're in the middle of a virtual match right now. And he's, he's engulfed in that, but he sends his regards. Uh, I'd also like to thank our staff member, John Rogers. Uh, under the name, it says Ben Flary, but it's actually John, who has been my engineer here tonight. Um, I neglected to say this earlier, so I do have to, to say it now. Uh, you know, the family has requested that in lieu of flowers, that uh, you consider making a contribution to DeMatha uh, to the John Moreland Scholarship Fund. 
And I know that they would be um, touched if uh, you consider doing that. A number of donations have come in uh, this week. So uh, if, if you would like to uh, express uh, further, uh, you know, your support of John, uh, you can contribute online, uh, www.dematha.org. You can send a check to the school made out to DeMath and put the John Moreland Scholarship Fund in the reference section, or you could always contact me if you have another question. We're going to bring Kevin Moreland on here in one second, but um, in, in the year 2000 at John's retirement dinner, uh, which was held at Indian Spring Country Club, uh, the song The Impossible Dream was sung at John's request. And you're going to hear that song from the Damatha community in this next year as we approach our 75th anniversary. Uh, the Impossible Dream is from Man of La Mancha, which of course is about Don Quixote, uh, which was written by Cervantes, who was actually uh, freed by the Trinitarians. So there's a Damatha connection to that. It's interesting that John uh, selected that song. I've listened to it several times in the past few days. And I think you should look at the lyrics because in some respects, the math is the impossible dream, a, a school that started with just a handful of young men in the building that I'm in right now uh, to grow to what it's become. And John Moreland played a huge part in that impossible dream. And that's why his legacy and his memory will remain forever in the halls of Damatha. Um, Kevin, Kevin Moreland, can you hear me? Tom, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can. The Matha community. I'm going to have a hard time with this, but I'll try. The Matha community, thank you so much. This has been wonderful tonight. Um, Father James, first and foremost, thank you so much for being there right at the moment when we absolutely needed you. Dan McMahon, I opened the Express today. I read the eulogy. Then I turn the video on. Thank you so much. Simply marvelous tribute, wonderful words. Uh, to everybody, this has been, uh, oh, Kelly Brandman on behalf of the diocese, thank you very much. And for sticking with the Damatha yucks and humor and whatnot and everything associated with it, thank you. I hope you appreciate more a little bit about what we are truly about. It's been a very emotional week. Um, the standard laughs, the cries, the uh, eating a lot of good food, a little too much. Um, Tom Ponton, thank you so much for being, uh, putting this on tonight and for being really a part of the math and a part of our family. Um, with all the emotions this week, if nothing else, with everybody's uh, tributes, it has been absolutely uplifting. And we want to thank everybody, whether we knew you or not, the comments on the Facebook, the Twitters tonight, uh, every form of media, emails, and so on. We are so grateful. Um, so for my mother, I'll be short for my mother, my brothers and sister, um, our children, everybody, all of our nieces, nephews, um, dad's grandchildren, uh, and our and our family who who will be hopefully joining us soon for the private ceremony. Now we will get to do this again and share with all of you uh, when COVID allows this. So thank you so much uh, for everything and for tonight. This is truly very special. Uh, I know my mother is, is deeply appreciative as she, uh, we only, we, we can't know, or we hopefully we do know and are, we'll continue to be here to support her as she more than anybody uh, 66 plus years of marriage and a truly remarkable uh, woman. And she more than anybody I know is gonna miss uh, my dad so much. Uh, thank you again. And we look forward to hearing from all of you and seeing you as in the coming weeks and months and, and uh, when we get to do uh, a true celebration uh, when COVID allows it. Um, uh, two seconds to uh, any of my brothers, and if not, uh, uh, love y'all. Thank you very much, Tom, Damatha, everybody. All right, Kevin. Uh, Pat, uh, would you like, Patrick, would you like to say a, a couple words? Patrick? Uh, Tim? I'll just, I'll just say thank you to everyone. Um, 
it's great to see a lot of people. It's great to hear the stories, the information and the, the text messages and the emails and the phone calls have been uplifting to say the least. Um, humbling. I truly just proud. And then <clears throat> just thank you to the Damascus family. Greatest family on earth. Thank you. Thank you, Pat, and the Moreland family. For, uh, for being such a part of DeMatha. Um, Tim? Hi, Tom, and everybody on the call. I don't know if you can see me or hear me. We can. Um, I don't know how I can follow those, uh, nor anybody that, that has spent the time to share their experiences and their, their tributes and their love for, for our father. Um, it, it, he's obviously and was a truly remarkable man that we are all extremely proud of and so happy that he could touch so many lives in such a positive way. Uh, I want to say and echo the sentiments of the family, Kevin, Patrick, I know Kathleen, my mother, and, and just say again, thank you all so very much for your support and, and your loving words and tributes. Um, to Martha forever. Thank you, Tim. And this has been, well, uh, Kath, uh, well, it's, uh, Kath, Kathy, uh, Kathy Moreland, do you want to, we don't, can't leave out the, the, uh, the sister there. Would you like to say something, Kathy? Sure. Sure, Tommy. So I, I'm the daughter. Everybody knows the sons, but I'm the daughter. I'm here too. I did not get to experience the DeMatha, um, high school education, but I have truly um, experienced the DeMatha family throughout my whole life. I started going to DeMatha sporting events uh, when I could barely walk. Um, to this day, I don't appreciate women's basketball as much as I appreciate men's basketball because I watch so many great games um, throughout my childhood and adulthood. And I am so, um, so very grateful um, for all the kind words that everyone has shared about my dad. Um, we do feel the love um, and, and we appreciate it. And even though I didn't go to DeMatha, I do bleed red, white, and blue. All right, well, I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna uh, have a glass of wine and toast John Moreland. I suggest everyone else do the same or have a a uh, glass of Pepsi or whatever is your fancy. Uh, thank you all again so much for being a part of this. It really has been wonderful to see the outpouring of support for somebody who gave so much to DeMatha. I mean, DeMatha stands tall and all that is true, steeped in tradition of a cross red and blue, built on a promise that challenges never, DeMatha today, DeMatha forever. So I'll leave it. Father James, would you like to conclude with some type of prayer here? I just threw sure. that monkey wrench at your father, but. Uh... Well, really, uh, if we listen to what everyone has said tonight, <clears throat> prayer is lifting up our minds and hearts to God and talking about things that to us where we need his help. So may I say that everything that was shared tonight with all of these wonderful speakers are really prayers from our hearts. And uh, it's been comforting. Uh, it's been emotional. It's been enlightening. And it really reinforces that whole aspect of brotherhood at DeMatha. I don't know if there are other schools that would have had this opportunity, that it would have been responded so significantly and so powerfully and so freely. Um, it's just a, a marvelous thing that our school has created since 1946, and certainly when the years that John was our school leader, that men can come together and express deep feelings and not be embarrassed about that. 
That is a gift that many schools are unable to give. And certainly, DeMatha has given that to all of us here and beyond. So uh, that's our prayer. You have all spoken words of prayers tonight, and God is listening to our wounded hearts. Uh, God's listening uh, with his grace of comfort and consolation. And for everything that has been said by everyone before, may we all just conclude with an amen. And amen. And St. John, uh, pray for us. Pray for In the us. name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Tom. Good night, Tom. Good night, Tom. Good night, Good night. Good night. Good night. Tom. Thanks, Tom. Good night, Tom. Good night all. The chat. See if there were minutes. Good night. Good night, all. Good night, everybody. Good night.